Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, we are going to do our final deep dive, fully max, full analysis, grades, masteries, build, showcase of Morrigan in honor of the fusion coming to a close, and lots of people in the player base acquiring her as a champion. So let's get into it. Alrighty, and for those of you watching this video in the future, Morrigan was the Fusion Legendary event for Halloween of 2022, introduced to the game in October of 2022 as a new champion in honor of that Halloween Fusion. Now, the amount of the player base that was hyped around that Fusion seemed a little bit lower than normal, and most of the polling that I did here on the channel reflected about an 80-20 split between people not doing the Fusion versus 20% of people doing the Fusion. Now, I do always say this as a caveat, but viewers of my channel tend to lean towards being a little bit more more dedicated players so probably about 10 to 15 percent of the player base was excited about going hard in the paint to make sure they fuse more again now later on in the video we will go over the full kind of tier list type grades that i did with viewers live on twitch and i'll let you know my final thoughts on her as a champion if i think she should be buffed nerfed or anything that have a change about her in my opinion but right now i want to start off by just doing a quick synopsis and rehash of her kit and her base stats and give you that analysis so the a1 we've got an a1 that decreases speed and it is going to be a 50 percent chance like a book up to 70 sniper would give you a 75 so a decently reliable speed down on the a1 and then the a2 can be booked to a three turn cooldown and a 100 percent chance of placing a true fear debuff on all enemies for one turn and will also steal all buffs from a target enemy and decrease accuracy for two turns instead if they are a boss so if they're a boss and you can't place the true fear obviously at least you get the caveat of getting some value by doing a decrease accuracy to that boss instead but if it's not a boss if it's arena or something you're going to be stealing all the buffs from a target and then you're also going to be putting a true fear on everybody kind of staying in that halloween theme a couple years ago when they brought uh fear and true fear to the game as a new mechanic they did that by rolling out harvest jack as a halloween champion and then they're staying in that same frame uh having more again based around the fear mechanic in honor of Halloween. And then the A3, we have got, you can book to a four turn cooldown of decreasing the turn meter of all enemies by 20%. That'll be guaranteed as long as you have the accuracy to land it and you have booked this champion. We're also going to get a Lysandra like effect by filling all the turn meters of all allies by 20% and giving them speed for two turns, the 30% version. We also get a passive at the start of every turn, place a heal reduction for two turns on the enemy with the lowest HP. And this debuff cannot be removed transferred spread or have its duration kind of altered in any way so a consistent way to get a heal reduction on a target to kind of help you can uh confirm some kills in like a tag team arena fight or something and then we get a very consistent one of the best auras in the game of ally speed in all battles by 19 percent then for the base stats down there on the bottom right um pretty solid to be honest you've got uh, th like the attack doesn't really matter. Yes, she scales with attack, but she is a support champion, so not really worried about building her for damage. Um, the HP and the defense aren't great. 1200 defense is not bad for a support, though. The 112 speed is really nice, and then she gets a base of 40 total with the 30 resistance and the 10 accuracy. So now let's dive on over to the more game that I have got built, where we can talk about the masteries and the build and the sets to use, the booking process, and everything that goes in to actually building. A more again okay so here we are and first off you can see the set choices that we kind of want to go with things like perception and speed are going to be great on her because she is a turn meter booster and a speed uh, booster we do want her to have very high speed so something like speed gear is going to synergize very well she also needs a lot of accuracy to make sure we are landing the decreased speed on the a1 and we are stealing the buffs placing those true fears and also lowering the turn meter of all enemies so accuracy is definitely Definitely premium on her. The stats you're going to want to focus the most on while building are probably going to be speed and accuracy. So obviously a set like perception that gives you speed and accuracy is going to be a great choice. Other than that, you don't really need to build for damage. So just get as much toughness as you can besides the speed and accuracy, which means when we dive into these specific pieces of gear quickly, you want a banner uh, exactly like this one. <laughs> you want six star accuracy with a lot of speed and toughness on it. Something like this is like a nine point 
8.5 out of 10. An absolutely banger of a banner for her. For, like, the amulet and the ring, uh, you're going to want as much toughness as you can get. But for the priority of those two slots, I would say is getting an amulet that has at least two or three rolls of accuracy on it. It's going to help you a lot if you can glyph up to, like, 40 accuracy from your amulet slot. The ring, go with defense or HP as the main stat. And then just get as much toughness as you can get. Speed boots, 99% of the time, you're going to want to go with speed boots on her. She, like I said, she's a booster. She's a speed buffer. She's a terminator manipulator. You want to get her going fast. For gloves and chest, you can kind of alternate and go one of each if you want. Defense and HP, you're mainly just looking for toughness, speed, and accuracy from all of these other remaining slots. Then if we tab on over to the skills, you can see that we've got four books, plus three is seven, plus three is 10, and 10 books total. Now, honestly, that's not very bad. I would say the average is about 10. A champion is on the low side if they're around eight or nine, and they're on the high side if they're around like 12 or 13. So 10 is pretty par for the course, and she's a decent progression champion. She's pretty solid. Uh, so there's really nothing wrong with booking her if you're gonna be using her. As far as book value, you do get a lot of, Plarium is kind of learning to do a better job with disseminating the book value. I used to be able to, in my videos, kind of talk about like, oh, try to save a book here or there if you get good RNG. But once you've committed to booking a champion like uh, like Morrigan, you're not going to want to miss out on 10% buff debuff chance on an ability that starts at 50. You're just going to want to scoop that up. So if you're investing six or seven books in her, you're probably going to want to go the full 10 because you get the uh, a lot of buff and debuff chance on the A1, and then you get cooldowns on the A3 and the A2. Then if we tab on over to the masteries, um, you don't really need to go down the offense tree and get War Master on her or anything. Uh, it would be a super niche setup, like uh, you're trying to do some like dungeon speed run or something. Um, or if you use her as like a, like a way to unlock a certain clan boss composition, then you would want to go down the War Master tree. But there's nothing wrong with going defense and support on her. Uh, Oppressor is a decent choice as your tier six mastery because you are going to be placing a lot of debuffs. Uh, uh, on your opponents by keeping up the decreased speed on the A1 and then also placing those true fears and decreased accuracy and all of that. But you can also go with Eagle Eye just to make sure because remember, we need a lot of accuracy on her. She's got to get enough to get value out of her kit. So you can definitely go with Eagle Eye as well. And then I'd say otherwise, you'd probably just go with uh, with War Master for more consistency in terms of cranking out a little bit more DPS if you're using her in PvE content. So yeah, I'll leave these up for a little bit. If you would like to take a screenshot or pause the video or copy these in, in any way, these are going to be most the, like kind of this general utility uh, masteries for her as long as you've hit your accuracy threshold and you're not going to be using her somewhere like the Demon Lord Clan Boss, which means you don't need the offense tree. Then as we move on to showcasing her in battle, first of all, absolutely love her aesthetic, like the swirling whirlpool underneath her looks amazing. Uh, they, they always do a great job with the aesthetics and Morrigan is no different. Now for her AI, you can basically take it to the bank that she's always going to be prioritizing the A3 here, which is called the Velocimency. Velocimency? I have no how, clue how to say that. It's like, it's like Velocity Necromancy or something. Velocimency? Okay, interesting. Is that a word? I want to look that up. And wow, that's funny. Literally, when I type it in, it comes up with the two words I was thinking of. It comes up with velocity and necromancy. So uh, yeah, I guess it's not even a word, but a cool name for an ability nonetheless. But anyway, she's going to be prioritizing that uh, that A3 whenever she can and whenever it's on cooldown. You can see here when I hit auto, there it is. And boom. And then obviously, she's going to do the A3 and then go back to the rotation for her AI doing the uh, or going to do the A2. And then she's going to do that, that terminator suppression and increase speed as her D default ability on the AI and then I can kind of showcase her as a champion here on full auto just so you can kind of get a look at her animations kind of does that spin similar to a duchess and no uh no melee animations which is super nice a lot of times we'll we'll get these champions that are super slow but Plarium's doing a good job of moving away from that a little bit we used to see champions like Lord Shazar where they come in with their triple attack and they like all these super slow melee animations. She's got pretty fast animations and they're gonna perform perfectly fine. You can see all the fears going down for the suppression would be really good for trying to do some of those tougher Doom Tower stages because if you get good RNG on her, you can get a bunch of the enemy abilities to get wasted and be put on cooldown. And she could even be a decent candidate for like soloing content maybe if you had her in like regen gear or something because she can suppress things so well.
as you can see her doing uh, just fine here soloing this content, but admittedly this is not super difficult content. If you start taking her into like level 25 of the Ice Golem or something, it's probably going to be too difficult. I don't know that she would be a great candidate for something like that. And I am on the test server right now to be able to bring you this content as soon as possible and, and showcase a maxed out Mora gain for you. I would do a little bit more PvP tag team arena type fighting if I could, but uh, these are my options right now on the test server for, for arena fights. Um, if I was going to use her in the context of a tag team arena, she is a speed buffer, which is super nice. You could use her as a fill-in uh, for a nuke team like this with where you see uh, you, you'll get a lot of situations where you've got a team with like your Arbiter and then a booster to fill in the gap and then your buff strip, debuff like a Madame Saris into your nuker. Uh, Morgan can fill in that, uh, that, that, that gap filler role that Wasandra fills in on a lot of those teams where you, you have your Arbiter go, then you have Morgan fill in and then you your stripper a debuffer than your nuker so she do just find that role if you don't have a Lysandra or something keep an eye out for Morrigan to do just fine in that team if you're going to use her on like a defensive tag team arena type team she doesn't have revive she doesn't have an ability to kind of get you to be able to go second like a Tormund or a Krisk or a, a Duchess something like that so you really have to put her in a flex spot uh, she could do decent against teams maybe that have like a wither a team that that is Vogoth, Wither, some of these tag team arena teams that are really structured around doing a lot of healing. Morrigan can suppress a little bit of that healing with her passive where she places that 100% heal reduction. So something to keep an eye on. I don't think she's going to be amazing in the arena, but if you are set on using her, those are a couple different situations where she could probably do okay in PvP content as long as you've got decent gear for the level you're fighting at. Now, when it comes to somewhere like Faction Wars, I think she's actually going to be really good because she does have that speed aura, that 19% in all battles. And turn meter suppression on that AoE is insane in Faction Wars. She is so much faster than the champions you are facing in the waves that she's going to get a lot of turn meter suppression off in Faction Wars. And also when you're facing the annoying mechanics like those Valkyries placing all, the, all of those shields and counterattacks, she's got an ability to do the true fear where they can kind of put that on cooldown and completely waste it. So I do think she's going to be amazing in the undead Faction Wars, uh, bringing a lot of different utility to the table with the speed uh, boosting and giving that 30% increased speed to your whole team, obviously, with the turn meter manipulation on both sides, uh, getting the effects to be on cooldown and not get used. So especially if you don't have a Masha lead, she'd be great to go against this wave right here with all of the Valkyries and really speed up your average clear time in the undead faction war. So I do think she's going to be really great there. Now let's go over the fun part, and that is the grades for Morrigan. Now, I did these live on Twitch probably 10 days ago or so uh, with the chat kind of helping me come up with some of these grades and try to get as much input as I could when doing this. So what we ended up with was an 8 for book value, an 8.5 in the arena, a 9 in Hydra, 5.5 in the Demon Lord, a 9.5. We talked about her being awesome in Faction Wars, 9 in the Doom Tower, 9 in the Dungeons, and then 5 for Scarcity like yes she does some cool things but there's nothing like super new or super hard to find in her kit so she ends up being mostly average in terms of scarcity but pretty solid uh, grades across the board and even could be unlocking some unkillable compositions maybe with the speed boost and the turn meter fill for the demon lord so not complete trash there it's just like her a1 isn't going to do like the decrease speed really in the clan boss and doesn't really bring a whole lot to the table but could actually unlock some compositions maybe uh filling a specific role there um, you know, most fusions, they probably end up around an eight grade. I would say the bad ones end up around seven and the really good ones like Mighty Uko can end up around nine, 9.2 or so. So about what we would expect for a typical fusion, not like super hype, best champion in the game, but also not complete trash. She is definitely very usable in a lot of different areas of the game for general utility for lots of accounts out there. So then is there anything that I would have changed about her as a champion? Um... Maybe the base HP is a little low. Like maybe bump this up to like 20.5 thousand. Like give her like 700 base HP or something. 
Other than that, the base stats are mostly fine. It might be nice to give her 20 accuracy. I may do that because she's only got 40 combined between resistance and accuracy. So I would have probably done a 30-20 split there on that. But just because accuracy is so important for her and it's really her only role is the Terminator filling and the, the accuracy of placing her debuffs. And she doesn't do anything like super special where she's going to be broken as a champion or something. So nothing there would have been nothing wrong with doing that. Otherwise, I mean, her kit's pretty solid. The A1 is pretty mundane, but it's great for boss fights to bring that permanent. Uh, I would have maybe made this a multi-hitter or something. Like, attacks one enemy twice uh, would be about the only change I would have done. Um, you know, this is mostly fine. Um, stealing all buffs from all enemies would have maybe been a little bit too strong when you're also getting the CC. So, I don't, like... And then the turn meter fill and the speed, it, like... Yeah, I'm, you know, maybe her passive add a little bit something to it, um, make it a little bit more interesting instead of just a heal reduction, have it do something super special, uh, like, like maybe if a champion under a heal reduction attacks, then there's a 50% chance to place a fear on them or something, like maybe just put a little bit of icing on the cake for her passive, other than that, I mean, they gave her a really good R us and, and pretty decent, uh, base stats, including an amazing base speed, so, I mean, you know, not every champion can be an A plus god tier 9.5 on the tier list. So I think she is a decent fusion and going to be good for a lot of accounts out there. And I'm mostly okay with her design. Maybe a couple little bumps here or there would have been great for her. But yeah, that is going to do it for my look at Mora Gain here on the channel. And as always, remember to subscribe on your way out if you enjoy daily Raid Shadow Legends content. And let me know down below where you agree and where you disagree. It's always fun to hear the feedback down below as well. So thanks for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.